Hi there, and a very warm welcome to our student devotion for this week on our Bible journey, which I have called Route 66. Now, you will know there's a very famous Route 66 between Chicago and Santa Monica in California, but we are doing a Bible journey instead. We're on our own Route 66 on a journey through the Bible. And we're going to take a devotion from each of the 66 books from Genesis to Revelation. We've already done Genesis, Exodus, and Leviticus, and obviously there are just thousands of devotions that one could do. But the plan is to take just one thought from each of the inspired books and uh, just to show that every single one of them is relevant to us today. So the one we arrive at as our fourth stop is the book of Numbers. Now, after all the exciting stuff in Genesis and Exodus and the somewhat intriguing stuff in Leviticus, a lot of people want to jump over Numbers because it just seems to be all about numbers, all about uh, counting how many Israelites there were and so on. But buried in there, as in every book of the Bible, there are some wonderful gems. And I want to focus on the one in Numbers 6, 24 to 26, and to look first of all at the background. The children of Israel, as you remember, had been slaves in Egypt, and uh, they had got out of there thanks to the Lord sending Moses and Aaron to Pharaoh, uh, working some miracles, ten plagues. Pharaoh eventually said, okay, you can go, please get out. So they all left, they began walking through the desert. Pharaoh changed his mind and sent his army or came with his army after them. And uh, when they got to the Red Sea, God worked another incredible miracle, got them through the Red Sea, destroyed the enemy that was trying to pursue them. And they found themselves eventually in the wilderness of Sinai, gathered around the foot of the mountain called Mount Sinai. And there we're told in Numbers 1.1 that the Lord spoke to Moses in the wilderness of Sinai. And one of the most beautiful things that he did for them while they were there was to give them a triple blessing. They were his special people. They were called into a relationship with him. But what is so beautiful about the Old Testament is that although it does focus on the children of Israel, it gives us the picture of who God is and it gives us the picture of the relationship he wants with us even today. So here is a blessing from the Lord for them, but also for you and me. And the first part of it in number 624, using the New Living Translation, may the Lord bless you and protect you. Now, who of us wouldn't want protection in our day and age? There seem to be so many reasons why physical protection is a good idea. And of course, God did that for the children of Israel through the desert, and then they got into the promised land, and uh, for all the centuries after that. But what's beautiful is that his greatest protection for them and for us today is spiritual protection. He wants to take care of us and keep us in a good place in our relationship with him. Satan would love to put us into a bad place. Satan would love to cause us to fall into his temptations and uh, run away from God, turn our backs on him. But God says, oh no, once you're in a relationship with me, once you're my son or my daughter, I'm here to bless you and protect you. And he urges Aaron to make this blessing over the people then, and we have it in the inspired scriptures. So that's a blessing for you today. God, the God who rules this entire universe, wants to protect you if you've entered into a relationship with him. The second part of this blessing is, may the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. Isn't that a beautiful picture? God is not a human being, but he often uses the phraseology that we would use of being able to, for example, smile. And here's the picture of a God who loves us, who cares for us like a father, because Jesus told us that we could call the Almighty God our Father. And he says, I want to smile on you and be gracious to you. Now, grace is undeserved favor. And we know we don't deserve anything from the hand of God because we are sinners, because we get things wrong all the time. But God's plan is to smile on us and be gracious to us, to 
graciously forgive our sins because of Jesus' death on the cross, but graciously to continue to be with us every step of the way, graciously to care for us, graciously to provide for us, graciously as we've seen to protect us, graciously to stand by us when things are tough and when things are good. He wants to just bless us. And the third part of the blessing, may the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace. Sounds a little bit like uh, what happened when the angels appeared at the time of the birth of Jesus, where peace was promised for all those on whom God's favor rests. Now that's not because God has favorites, but because God favors those who have chosen to have a relationship with him. And once we're in that kind of relationship, he says to you and me, I want to give you my peace. We'd love to have peace around us. We'd love to have physical peace. That's not ever going to happen until Jesus returns because we live in a sinful world. We live in a fallen world. We live in a world that's full of war and hatred and killing and greed and everything else that messes up that once beautiful world that God made. But what is so lovely about this blessing is that that's not what it's about. This is peace of the heart. This is a peace, so the Bible says, that the world cannot give. It's a peace that is on the inside saying to us, God is with me. God is taking care of me. I can be at peace even if I'm surrounded on every side by that which would seek to destroy peace. And so the Lord says, you are my favorite. There are lots of favorites. They're all the ones who God has entered into that relationship with. But he says, I want you to have my peace. And then I, I want you to notice in the next verse of uh, number 627, that the Lord says to Moses, whenever Aaron and his sons, in other words, all his descendants who were going to be the priests for all the centuries to come, whenever they bless the people of Israel in my name, I myself will bless them. Now, do you get that? That means that when we as humans bless one another, when our spiritual leaders uh, call down God's blessing on us, that's not just human words. That's not just mouthing uh, audible sounds. Because God says, when that happens, when people invoke my blessing on others, I myself will bless them. Wouldn't you like to know that God's going to bless you today? Wouldn't you like to know that his blessing rests on your life, on your family? on your studies, on your present or future career, on everything about you. God says, because you're my child, I just want to heap my blessing on you. In the same way as you and I with our children and maybe grandchildren, want to just bless them with all sorts of good things. God's got the father heart that says exactly that. He said, I just want you to be blessed. I want you to know that you're blessed. And blessing doesn't necessarily mean uh, physical or material things, although God tends to bless us with many of those as well. But that's, that's a side issue because we're only going to have those for a short time and then we're going to have to leave them behind when we move on to the next life to be with him in heaven. He says, no, I want to bless you in a way that's going to last for eternity. So I want to give you peace in your heart now. I want to give you a good relationship with me now. I want you to know that you're my child. Uh, deep inside yourself to know that without a shadow of a doubt and then I want you to anticipate being with me forever because I have in fact kept a place for you and when you arrive I'm going to say well done good and faithful servant enter into the joy of your Lord our blessing doesn't even stop at death get your head around that God's blessing is with us through this life and into the life that lies ahead Let's not demean God's blessing. Let's not diminish it by making it into things, stuff that is around us. I'm blessed because I've got a new car. 
I'm blessed because I live in a beautiful home. I'm blessed because I went on this wonderful holiday. Yes, those in a way are blessings, but that's not what God is promising in this verse. He says, I just want to bless you on the inside so that you will know that your relationship with me is rock solid, that you will know that your present life is surrounded by my goodness and my grace and my mercy and my love, and that your future life is absolutely secure in my hands where I'm waiting to welcome you to spend eternity with me. What wonderful promises we have in this threefold blessing from the book of Numbers. I trust that's been an encouragement to you today and I'd like to pray for you now. Father, I want to pray for every student viewing this video and thank you for bringing them to LAPU and for blessing them with the opportunity of study to improve their minds, but also of study at a Christian university where they can learn about how to have a good relationship, a better relationship, an eternal relationship with you. And I just want to ask that these few simple words from this blessing will be an encouragement to them as they know that they are not alone, they are surrounded by people who love them and care for them at LAPU through the faculty and staff, but far more importantly, they are surrounded by your love. And you have promised to protect, you've promised to smile, you've promised to let your favour rest, you've promised to bless. May we experience that today in a very real sense and be given what you have promised with peace, even if our circumstances don't lend themselves to that externally right now. I pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and God bless you.